الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسبه قد جعل الله لكل شيء قدرا I was there to say some words about the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which indeed is a topic that has been discussed in detail in Quran and Tahim More than 200 places in Quran al kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed taqwa. But normally when we start thinking about taqwa, the first thing that comes to our mind is, this is a very high category of believers. And of course, I do not fall there. It's not for me. Someone would ask us to do something, the right girl will say, you know, I'm not a very muttaqi person. This person, mashallah, he's a very God-fearing person. He has a lot of taqwa, but not me. So the understanding of taqwa is, it's a category which is difficult. And not only difficult, sometimes it seems like impossible for us to obtain and to be at that level. Of course, when we look into the ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem we can see that it is a very high category of Iman for a person to be at the level of Taqwa. But at the same time, we need to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered each and every one of us to obtain taqwa. Obtaining taqwa is far, is not optional. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqwa Allah haqqa tuqaati. Have the taqwa of Allah as much as you are supposed to have. It's an order. Obligation, fariqah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed different ways of obtaining taqwa in Quran al -Kari. If a person really would like to go into the details of it, then you can start looking at the ayahs of Quran al kareem that talk about the importance of taqwa. Then the ayahs that would talk about the means of achieving taqwa. Then the ayahs that would teach us what is the way of keeping the taqwa once we obtain it. Then those ayahs that would tell us the benefit of taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, have discussed in detail in Quran al kareem about this topic of taqwa. At this time, all I would just like to bring to everyone's attention about this topic is that when we consider this topic or this taqwa, this quality to be impossible to achieve, it's because we have not looked into the ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem Otherwise, we would realize that this is the beauty of this deen. Always remember this. This is the beauty of this deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always Mean obtaining the highest levels, the easiest things to obtain. 
the highest thing you can obtain in this deen are the easiest ones to get. Think of something that is very difficult. And then you will find that as soon as you start looking at it from this deen, from the Quran and the uh, hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would find it very easy to obtain and achieve. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this deen, مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ did not put any difficulties in this deen. This is exactly what it means that everything that was difficult to obtain in the past became very simple and easy in this deen. People in the past thought to obtain these high categories of iman, they have to go and live in deserts, in jungles. Don't see no one, don't get married, don't have no children, don't associate with people. Whatever you find in the desert, in the jungle, tree, trees, leaves of the trees, just eat that, eat grass and survive on that. And then you will become, hopefully you will become a person of Taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very simple for us. And even that was not prescribed for them. They thought this is what it was. In this deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made things extremely simple. And taqwa being one of the highest levels of iman. One of the highest levels of iman is taqwa. A major when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran al-Kareem talking about the benefits of taqwa says, in awliya'uhu illa al-muttaqoon. Muttaqun, the people of Taqwa are the friends of Allah. What can be a higher category than this? Having a close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connecting our soul with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and considering to consider it to be one of awliya Allah. Who doesn't want to be of awliya Allah? Read about them. Oh, those people, subhanAllah, they were such high people, such great people. I can never be like those people. But here, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that all of you can become one of those. This is the beauty of the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not close these doors for anyone in this deen. A person does not have to run out to the jungles to become a person of taqwa. You can still be in the same position that you are in. Associate with your family, fulfill your, their needs, their requirements. In fact, who can have more taqwa than the Prophet of Allah And we see that Rasulullah doing all of these things that normally we think we have to give them up in order to have taqwa. Some of the Sahaba and one Allah alayhi wa sallam. Of course, as they had looked in the previous theme, previous adhyan that they were that were there at that time, and people that were considered to be religious people in those days, in the previous nations. So when they studied those, when they looked at those, and those are the highest category of people, people of Iman and Taqwa. Sahaba Rahmanullah and Ajma'in approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now in different ways they are trying to get a permit and get some type of leave that Ya Rasulullah allow me to go and spend my time out in the jungle. So that he can be one of the high people of the highest taqwa in this, in this uh, Islam, in this deen. Aisha radiallahu brings one of those incidents when three of the Sahaba Ridwan of Allah alayhi wa young of the Sahaba, young Sahaba Ridwan of Allah alayhi wa they approached Aisha radiallahu anha in the absence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked her, tell us something about the ibadah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Aisha radiallahu anha explained the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them where they find that when he comes home, he works with them, he helps them in the, doing some of the housework, 
He sits with them, he jokes with them. These Sahaba Ridwanullah's understanding, imagination was totally different. That this is a person, he has to be a person who never smiles, who would never come home and eat if there is food, throw it out. Don't sit with your family, don't joke with your family, don't associate too much with them, stay away from all of these things. But on contrary, they see that Rasulullah's life is totally different. He's doing all of these things. So they go back and start discussing. They're sitting in the masjid and they're discussing it among themselves that look, I think he's doing this because Allah has forgiven all of his sins. So he doesn't need anything more to do now. So this is why he's doing all of these things. Allah already granted him that status. One of them says, yeah, that is the status of the Prophet And of course, he doesn't need too much of the ibadah. But for me, I need it. What I'm going to do today from now on is, one of them says, I will be fasting for the rest of my life. Not a single day of my life will go by when I'm not fasting. The other one says, for me, throughout my life, I would never sleep during the night time. Every night I will be standing in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Isha to Fajr. You just see me standing and doing the ibadah of Allah. The third person says yes. And I would do one more thing. And that is, I would never get married. Because association with people, especially the responsibilities and having children and fulfilling the needs, takes us away from deen and does not allow us to do what we are supposed to do. I cannot be in the higher level of imamah, so I would stay away from marriage also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he came home, Ummul Mu'mineen, Aisha al-Siddiqah radiyallahu anha, informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of what she heard from these Sahaba, their question initially, and then as they were discussing it, she is hearing it. And she informs Rasulullah of all things that she heard from them. Rasulullah went out to look for them. When they all came, Rasulullah asked them, Are you the people who said this and this? So, they realized that by looking at Rasulullah's face that he's, he looks upset. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, yes, we said it. We only wanted khayr, we only wanted, our intention was good, Ya Rasulullah, we don't know if we did something wrong. Rasulullah said, Don't you realize that no one fears Allah more than me? No one can have more taqwa than me. And you see that I. I fast sometimes and some of the days I don't fast. I stay up for the night and then I sleep some portion of the night too. And you see that I'm married. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّةِ فَلِيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever turns away from my sunnah is not of me. The whole foundation of taqwa in their mind was to live that type of life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching them no, to live this type of life. Do we realize what Rasulullah is telling me and you in these ahadith? While we are working, we are married, having children, fulfilling their needs, we are doing all of these things that normally when the people of the world would look at us, they would say that you are involved in worldly work. Rasulullah tells us this is part of your life of taqwa. So what does this mean then? How to obtain it? Whatever we are doing, whatever we are doing, as long as we make sure we do it according to the instructions given by Allah and His Messenger that is part of taqwa. The requirement for us to obtain taqwa is 
you should not be seen doing something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden us from doing. That's it. Fulfill the requirements of the deen. Don't fall into sins. Don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't disobey the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam. You have obtained a law. This is how simple Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have made this deen for us. That now, with all of your involvements, with all of your commitments, with that busy life that we are living, all of these things will become part of our deen and iman. And as long as we fulfill the requirements of deen, we don't fall into haram while we are doing these things. This is all part of our life of taqwa. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba al Allah and his name, it's a long hadith, I'm just mentioning the last portion of the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a person fulfills his desire with his wife, he gets reward for it. Sahaba al Allah and his name, asked, Ya Rasulullah, Yati ahadana shahwata, we fulfill our own personal desire. And we still are getting reward for it. For even then, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he asked Sahaba Allah alayhi a question. He said, tell me, if this person will go and fulfill the same desire in haram, wouldn't he get sin? Yes, Ya Rasulullah, for sure, he will get the sin. He said, then what do you think? You would get sin for doing it in haram and you won't get sin in doing it for halal? You don't get reward for doing it in halal, you get reward for it. If Allah is giving you sin on the other hand, He will give you reward on this hand here. SubhanAllah, beauty of esteem. These simple things, these things that are part of our nature, part of our life, Islam is a deen that applies to human nature, does not want to pull our nature away from us. Is a deen that applies to human nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He designed human beings, this is the same way He designed this deen for human beings. If we start fulfilling the requirements of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will only be according to what our real nature is. We won't be going away from our nature. We will still be living the same life. The only difference would be that now our intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Minor changes may be there. Very minor changes. We may have made some simple changes there, and that will just keep us away from the haram. Just stay away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was sending Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen, He said to Mu'az, Ya Mu'az, my last will you remember this. لَعَلَّكَ لَا تَرَانِي بَعْدَ عَامِي هَذَا وَسَتَرَى مَسْجِدِي وَقَوِي You may not see me next year when you come back. You will see my masjid, you will see my grave. He wanted to continue, but Mu'az radiallahu anhu, as soon as he heard these words, that I will not see the Prophet of Allah again in my life. He started crying loud. Rabaka Mu'ad and Jish'an, he started crying loud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued his nasiha to Mu'ad saying, Ya Mu'ad, remember one thing. Inna awla al-nasi bi al-muttaqoon. The closest people to me in the akhirah will be those who have the taqwa of Allah. Man kanu wa haythu kanu. Whoever they may be and wherever they may be. They don't have to be in Medina. They don't have to be here with me. I'm sending you to Yemen for some of my work. Go and stay over there and fulfill the responsibility assigned to you by the Messenger of Allah. As long as you live the life of taqwa over there, you will be close to me in Akhirah. The reward of taqwa, being close to Allah in Akhirah, being close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a reward in this dunya also. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ Allah will make every difficulty easy for this man, for this person. 
for a person who lived the life of Taqwa. Difficulties becoming easy does not mean this person will not be seen in hardship and difficulties. Study the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But becoming easy simply means every human being has to go through hardships and difficulties. But when this person is going through any of these situations in his or her life, that person at the same time sees the reward that he or she gets for going through this and enjoys that situation as much as the person seems to be suffering is enjoying the situation. Just like when you see a person who's doing a very hard work, the span of his job, he's doing a very hard, hard work, he's sweating, but still he continues working. And you go and tell this person, you know, I'm going to talk to your boss. I think he should lay you off. You should get laid off from this job. Because I see you going through a lot of difficulties here. And he would consider you to be his enemy if you would do something like this. No, I do it as fan of my job and I enjoy it. I enjoy going through this. Same thing when a person who has Iman and Taqwa goes through these type of situations that every human being goes through in this, in this life as part of our life, even that becomes part of his Iman. And during that situation, the person in his heart, in, in his heart is satisfied that Alhamdulillah, I'm getting the reward. I remember once, and I will end it with this inshallah, receiving a call from a sister. She asked me that I'm expecting very soon. And she says, I heard that there is some type of shots that I can get where I would not have too much pain of work. Is it allowed to take it? I said, there is nothing in Sharia that says you are not allowed to take it. Next question. Does a woman get a reward by going through the pain? I said, for sure. There are so many hadiths that talk about it. And I got a few hadiths to her. She said, with all of this reward, do you think I'm going to just let it go by that needle? By that one shot? I'll let all of my reward go away? No, I'm going to get all of the reward. Which simply means, is a pain that every woman has to go through. But she's enjoying that I will have the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by having this pain. So life taqwa does not require us to give up the whole life. We won't go, we won't go through any of these situations. We won't have no responsibilities, just go out and live somewhere else. No, the life taqwa simply means whatever you're doing it, do it for the sake of Allah and avoid the sins. You are a muttaqeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us a tawfiq to live the life of taqwa and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us of his awliya. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Wa nisakil wa muslimin wa muslimat wa akhir wa da'wana.